Ugh. Why is there a video camera pointing in my face? Static X are one of the most iconic bands of the late 90s. If you're like most people, you first noticed them because of the singer's one-of-a-kind, gravity-defying hair. But they were much more than just that. Bringing the sounds of industrial music to a whole generation of new metal kids, combining electronic elements with riffs inspired by bands like Pantera and Prong. They quickly became one of the most beloved bands in all of nu metal until tragedy struck and vocalist Wayne Static suddenly died in 2014. But instead of letting the band die with Wayne, they made the controversial choice of replacing him with an anonymous vocalist in a mask in a move that some people called creepy Wayne Static cosplay. And so the question is, what happened? What was behind Wayne's tragic death? And why did they decide to replace him like that? How did they go from being one of the most cherished, beloved bands in the entire genre to now being one of the most divisive topics among metal fans? Those are the questions that I will try to answer in this video. And also, I wanted to mention something new that I'm doing, which is a YouTube coaching program. If you're an individual creator or you're a company, really anybody that wants to grow on YouTube, this is for you. Basically, this is a way to download load everything that I've learned about YouTube over the past seven years from my brain into yours. There's a pretty common set of challenges that pretty much everybody runs into on YouTube. I've run into pretty much all of them. And with this coaching program, I can help you get past those a lot faster than I did figuring it out on my own. For example, in my opinion, the single most important thing for any channel is figuring out the right niche for your content. Like what should you focus on and how do you talk about it? For example, for me on this channel, once I found that I went from getting, you know, a couple hundred views a video to 10 tens of thousands of views per video, literally almost overnight. You can see it right here. And also the right approach to things like titles and thumbnails and how to structure your videos to keep people's attention. All that stuff that took me years to figure out on my own through trial and error. I just wanna help you speed run all of that. I am super excited about this and I'm gonna be putting a lot of time and energy into it over the course of the year. And if you wanna find out more about it, you can just hit the link in the description of this video. Before Static X, the founding member and singer Wayne Static was in a band called Deep Blue Dream with Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins, which disbanded when Billy decided to shift his focus to Smashing Pumpkins after that band started to gain some traction. And so in 1994, Wayne, along with the other founding member, Ken Joy, decided to move to Los Angeles to start a new band called Drill which would later be renamed to Static X. A few years later, they signed to Warner Brothers Records, and shortly after that released their debut album, Wisconsin Death Trip. And the album was a success pretty much right out of the gate. It initially charted at 107 on Billboard, but was getting more and more traction every month and ended up getting certified platinum just two years later. Sonically, they differentiated themselves from the other new metal bands in a few ways. For one, they were more inspired by industrial music compared to a band like Limp Bizkit, who was drawing more from hip hop or from Slipknot, who were drawing more from death metal. And so really it was the combination of those electronic elements from industrial with the tight groove metal riffs of bands like Pantera or Supple a lot of people at the time said it was like if Ministry and Slipknot had a baby, which isn't wrong. Although the band themselves called their sound Evil Disco, which honestly is pretty accurate. And after the success of Wisconsin Death Trip, the band didn't rest on their laurels and immediately started working on new music. The entirety of the next album was written solely by Wayne Static on tour, while the rest of the band was partying. And immediately this created some tension within the band because from Wayne's point of view, he didn't want to split the royalties in even four ways between every member of the band, which in my opinion is pretty understandable given that he did write everything by himself. But they were able to put those disagreements aside and they released their second album, Machine, in May of 2001. Go, 
and this was also a success for the band. It debuted at number 11 on Billboard, just shy of the top 10, and went on to be certified gold two years later. And sonically, they pretty much picked up where they left off with their previous album. So if you were a fan of Wisconsin Death Trip, then you pretty much liked this one too. Besides that, they also had songs featured on the soundtrack for Queen of the Damned and the Resident Evil movie, which if you're around back then, you know that the soundtracks to both of those movies were basically new metal paradise. But despite the success of the album, Wayne wasn't happy. He was dissatisfied that they couldn't hit the same numbers that they did with Wisconsin Death Trip, while the rest of the band was unhappy that they were essentially left out of the songwriting process. All of this led to a falling out between Wayne and the rest of the band, where eventually the guitarist and drummer ended up quitting. However, the new addition of Trip Eisen on guitar, who was responsible for writing about half the songs on the new album, along with some pressure from their label, led to the band pursuing a bit more of a melodic direction compared to their first two albums, which all led up to the release of their third album on October 7th, 2003, called Shadow Zone. It debuted at number 20 on Billboard and sold about half of what Machine did in the first week. But on the positive side, the song The Only also got featured in Need for Speed Underground, which at the time was a huge deal for any artist to be featured in a Need for Speed game which in turn led to the only being arguably their biggest song to date. And sonically, they scaled back the emphasis on the groove metal and industrial elements in favor of a more melodic direction. They didn't stray too far from what they had done on their earlier albums, but still it was fresh enough to make the fans happy and feel like they had gotten something more evolved. You can get it. You can still And before I go on really quick, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel and it makes sure that you don't miss a video. But despite all their recent success, Static X still couldn't keep a stable lineup. After some complications happening within the band, their original guitarist Koichi Fukuda returned to the lineup. And in June of 2005, they released their next album, Start a War. This one debuted at number 29 on Billboard, which was a solid win for the band. And the return of their original guitarist led to the band wanting to kind of recapture the spirit of Wisconsin Death Trip, which is what a lot of fans were asking for. And that is pretty much exactly what they did. It's still kind of in that same more melodic direction of the previous album, but still has the vibe of Wisconsin Death Trip. Several songs from this album were featured in more video games at kind of the peak of the era in which video game soundtracks were huge for music discovery. In particular, Need for Speed Most Wanted and WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. And two years later, in April of 2007, they released their next album, Cannibal. Oh, And for this one, they went in a completely new direction. The main thing being they stripped out a lot of the electronic elements and made it much more, for lack of a better word, metal. And so it was kind of interesting, almost 15 years into their career, they came out with easily the heaviest album that they had ever done. It has a lot more screaming. The songs in general are just a lot less radio friendly than any of their previous material. <laughs> And another two years later, like Clockwork, in March of 2009, they released their next album, Cult of Static. And this debuted at number 16 on Billboard, which was their highest chart entry since Machine. And so in that sense, it was a success. But overall, the fans didn't love it. And these days, I think opinion has maybe shifted a little bit. So you will see some people now who love the album. But at the time, and really up until this day, for most people, it's considered their worst material, which is a shame because as a lot of you know, this would end up being their final album. To make a long story short, the band at the time was a toxic environment because of a few factors. For one, Wayne was struggling with substance abuse, which collided with the drummer Oshido's newfound sobriety, while their guitarist Koichi wanted to focus on his family, all of which 
ultimately led to the band going on hiatus. Wayne focused on his side project called Pig Hammer and did some touring where he also played Static X's material. Their bassist, Tony Campos, joined Soulfly, and it seemed like the band was done. In 2012, Wayne had the idea of reforming Static X, but none of the other members were on board with the idea, so his solo band ended up touring under the name of Static X, but ultimately it didn't work out, and a year later the band officially broke up. And initially, Wayne blamed this on a dispute with Tony Campos over the rights to the name. Allegedly, Wayne paid Tony to use the name of the band while on tour, but during that tour, Wayne got sick. However, in 2019, it was revealed by their former tour manager that Wayne getting sick was actually a cover story and that what actually happened was a drug bust. And this is really a whole other topic that involves a lot of different other parties, but here is the official statement. Static X pulled off the headlining slot due to quote unquote medical problems. Real reason, a drug bust. And Frankie's band moved to the headlining position. After this happened, Wayne lost a lot of money and upset promoters after pulling out of the tour. With this in mind, rumblings of lower guarantees started happening and Wayne wanted to change the financial agreements to use the name. Wayne tried to lie to Tony about why he wanted to change the terms of what Wayne had already agreed to and cut Tony out of what he was owed. Wayne put himself in this position and tried painting Tony out to be the bad guy. Another thing worth mentioning is that while most fans believed that Wayne was pretty much the sole mastermind behind everything Static X did, and while he was certainly kind of the key creative driver, according to the rest of the band, he was not the only one putting in work. As their former tour manager said, Wayne Static wasn't Static X. This isn't a Nine Inch Nails scenario where Trent Reznor is Nine Inch Nails. Static X was always a partnership and it was 50-50 between Wayne and Tony. Wayne never wrote 100% of the music. Sure, Wayne was iconic to the band, but it was a collective and a partnership. That is fact and why Wayne needed permission from Tony to use the band name later. Obviously, none of us know what the truth actually was as far as who owned what and what the creative contributions were, but the real point is just that it was ugly to see all of this playing out in the press, and it became pretty clear that the relationship between the band members was beyond repair. But with all of that in mind, Wayne continued playing Static X's material under his solo project, most notably playing Wisconsin Death Trip in full in 2014 for the album's 15th anniversary. And if that was the end of the story of Static X, it wouldn't be so bad. It would be just another band that unfortunately split up due to creative differences and disputes over business. But as most of you probably know, the story is much more tragic than that. Wayne Static unfortunately passed away in 2014 at the age of 48. It was revealed by his wife that the cause of death was mixing prescription drugs with alcohol. At first glance, a lot of people thought that maybe it was suicide, but both his wife and mother stated that he wasn't suicidal. So it appears to be an accident, but unfortunately, we'll never really know. He was obviously incredibly talented, but also one of those people that everyone just seemed to love being around. And so to lose him at such a young age was incredibly difficult, obviously for his family, but also the fans. And as if the story wasn't sad enough already, just two years later, his widow Tara Ray also passed away her former attorney claiming at the time that it was suicide. So this is where our story ends, right? Well, not quite. Even though the band broke up and Wayne passed away, the rest of the band members decided to reunite the band in 2018. But without Wayne, how could the band go on? Did they decide to just get a new frontman or what happened? Well, the answer is complicated. It's a little bit yes and a little bit no. What they did is get somebody that sounds as close as possible to Wayne and dress him up in a costume that also looks like Wayne. Some people think this is totally out of line and completely immoral and disrespectful. Other people think Wayne would have been fully on board with it. Ultimately, none of us know what he would have wanted, so you'll have to make up your own mind on it. And they continued to release new music with two albums of previously unreleased songs with Wayne on vocals called Project Regeneration Volume 1 and Project Regeneration Volume 2. And they continued touring to this day with a person essentially cosplaying as Wayne. As far as I know, the mysterious singer is kind of unofficially acknowledged to be Edsel Dope from the band Dope. And although I do understand why a lot of people had a negative reaction to this reunited version of the band without Wayne, I do think that Edsel's take on the whole situation is also pretty fair. For me, it was more about making sure that Static X was properly represented because I would never be interested in looking at a photo of Static X or reading a liner note that mentions me as being the singer of Static X. Edsel Dope has no interest in being the singer of Static X. 
there's one living, breathing singer of Static X, and that's Wayne Static. And then there's a character, an entity, for lack of better words, that was created in order to allow Static X to have a future and to continue and be the legacy act that they are and tour and perform. And I don't know when Static X will decide to hang it up. As far as I know, their tours seem to do pretty well. But whenever they do, regardless of your opinion on the current state of the band, they'll always be remembered as one of the absolute best bands of the new metal era. All right, my friends, that does it for this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. And I'd like to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. Patrons get all my videos early. I do members only Q and A's. There are special channels on my discord that I'm super active in. And there's a way to have me review your music. So if any of that sounds interesting, hit the link in the description of this video. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.